We have another AC problem in the shop today. This is a 2000 Volkswagen Golf. It's a beautifully clean little car. It does have a 2 liter engine. It is the um, AEG letter code there. And this is AES. Pretty sure it's an AEG. Yeah, it's AEG. And the customer's concern is the AC don't work. And we have a procedure that we use here because we do, do so many Mark IV cars. So let me show you our procedure. Okay, so here is our checklist. AC clutch spinning. Obviously, if your AC clutch is spinning, you would, you would go a different route. We're not covering that in this video. You have the fuses on battery. You check the AC pressures with gauges. And that's assuming, of course, the clutch is off. You have to have greater than th approximately 30 PSI. That's not an actual specification. That's just how I wing it. And then you jumper power to the AC clutch. And what you're checking for there is the open clutch coil. I have a video on that. If you're going to watch that video, click on the link up there. And then you check all the fuses. And uh, the reason we check all the fuses is because it's fast. And if you have a blown fuse, you want to just change that fuse and be done with it. You don't want to have to spend the time finding a schematic, printing a schematic, and figuring out uh, which fuse powers what because that takes time. I have already done that on this car because uh, um, I've already went through this, this, this uh, procedure and haven't found the problem. So just to review, you take a look at your clutch and see if it's spinning. This is of course should be with the engine running. I'm just reviewing right now. Uh, our clutch was not spinning with the engine running. Obviously the AC needs to be on. And then you check this fuse box on the battery. Uh, this fuse right here relates to the fans, so you want to make sure it's not blown. And this fuse right here does uh, its part to power some stuff relating to the AC, including the fan control module. And while you're at it, you might as well make sure this connector's plugged in all the way because this fuse literally comes out this red wire right here and goes to other places. Um, and if that connector's unplugged, then um, you uh, could have a problem. You always want to pull this out and look at it because they have a problem with burning up there inside the fuse box. This one shows no damage and the fuse isn't blown. I have another car here right now. I will take you out there and show you the what a damaged fuse looks like. Okay, I'm just videoing this fuse. This fuse has some damage in there where it's been melted and uh, this car has been bypassed. That fuse is no longer doing anything. They've built something right here and pierced into that wire in order to bypass this fuse. I noticed that as we were diagnosing the AC. This one was just low on Freon and it's leaking from the uh, expansion valve. You can kind of see it's kind of green and air around the expansion valve. But uh, for now we're just going to fill it up and uh, fix the leak in a few weeks. But I thought I'd show you that fuse that was burnt there. And then after that you would uh, check AC pressure, and we do that with our we do that with our AC machine. But if you have gauges, you simply hook here and here and see what your pressures are. If you have less than approximately 30 psi, there isn't enough freon in there. The system will know that if there isn't enough freon based on the pressure switch there, and they, it will not turn on the AC clutch because there isn't enough pressure. The freon carries the oil through the system. And if there is no Freon in there, the oil doesn't pass through the compressor, so therefore the compressor would blow up. Blow up ain't a good term. Maybe it would wear out, destroy itself. And then the next test we do is we jump our power straight to the AC clutch. In this circumstance, it's easy to get to, right there. And we have a connector just for that that we've got off a parts car and we jumper power to it and then we know the clutch comes on at that point. This clutch did come on when we jumpered power to it. Uh, part of that procedure right also involve ohm checking the clutch coil. That should be approximately four ohms and when they fail they're usually completely open. Now at that point we would go in and we'd check all the fuses in the fuse box trying to find the problem quickly but if you don't find the problem at that point then that concludes our quick diagnostic list. Based on diagnosing this car, I'm going to modify my list and add one more item to it. And that is the diagnosis of this pressure sensor right here. Now this is a three wire pressure sensor, so it will have a power, a ground, and a signal return. 
one of the reasons you want to check all the fuses is because one of those fuses actually powers that device. So you want to check power on that device, ground on that device, and then check the signal return. Okay, in order to test this, we at least need the car on. And notice our fans came on there. That might be a symptom of our problem. And I'm going to hook my uh, the ground lead of my meter to the battery. And I'm going to turn the meter on. It's already on. And I'm going to touch the positive lead there to make sure my ground on my meter is good. And then I'm going to not get my cables in the fans there. But if I back probe one of them, I see 0.37 volts. Back probe the other one. And if I back probe the other one, I see 11 volts. So in almost every three wire sensor, the middle one's the signal return. I don't know how it's so consistent across brands and cars and but don't count on it, but, but generally it is, and I happen to know that this is the case on this one. So the brown one is the ground, and we're checking the ground, and the, there's three ways to check a ground. Number one, the definition of a bad ground is voltage on the ground. So if, do we have voltage on the ground? Not very much. It says 0.37 volts. But that doesn't necessarily test the ground because there's no load on it. So I'm going to take my test light, I'm going to hook it to the positive of the battery, and I'm going to touch a ground. You can see there my test light's lighting, and I'm going to touch the T-pin here in order to put a load on this circuit. And you can see there my test light's lighting, and we still have very little voltage on the ground. So that is, that is a good ground. So we, we already know we have a good ground, and we already know we have good 12 volts there. Well, the voltage is dropping because the fans are on. But, so that means we need to check our signal return. Now, I've already said that we checked pressure. We checked AC pressure with the clutch off, and it was above 30 PSI. From memory, it was about 70 or 80 PSI. Don't quote me on that, but the point is that at 70 PSI, there should be a certain amount of voltage on this wire. Now, it's actually a pulse width modulated signal, but the amount of voltage there can translate into the amount of pulse width modulation on that signal. If you got an oscilloscope, you can put an oscilloscope on it, and I'm going to do so, but if you don't have an oscilloscope, this voltage check is probably good enough. So I'm going to back probe that signal return wire, and I'm going to go ahead and start the car because my voltage is dropping. Just to refresh, we have the AC clutch is not on, and our voltage on the signal return wire of this pressure sensor is approximately 10 volts. Just so you know, I don't have all this memorized. I actually compared this to another car to be sure, but this voltage on the signal return wire when the clutch is not operating, when you're at approximately 70 to 90 PSI, which is what it would be at when the clutch is not operating, should be about 2.5 volts. We literally have 9 volts there. That means that this pressure switch sensor, I apologize if I keep saying pressure switch, if this, that means that this pressure sensor is showing maximum pressure right now. That's why our fans are running, and that's why the AC isn't working, because that is inputting to the fan control module that's underneath the battery here. That is inputting that pressure is at maximum, so it's turning off the compressor so that it doesn't overpressure and vent the Freon out the pressure relief valve. Now, this thing doesn't have overpressure, but the sensor is lying to the uh, fan control module to say that it does. So, based on that, I'm going to recommend to the customer to replace the AC pressure sensor, and that should fix the problem. I have a good used one here. I'm wondering if I should swap that in or just wait for the new one to arrive. Okay, so we'll get this sensor changed out. 17 millimeter wrench work here. I like a shorty there. And this will make a pop when it uh, releases. There's a Schrader valve underneath it. You don't need to worry about losing Freon. 
Hear that pop? And here's our known good used ones. I ain't going to tighten that all the way because we're just going to be changing that out with a new one when it gets here. And plug that in. And I'm going to go turn the car on. Don't pause. Now I want to point out, I think our fans were on high speed before when the pressure switch was showing high pressure to the fan control module all the time. If you could uh, film, film those fans real quick. Right now I think they're on low speed. Not 100% sure, but uh, I think so. And so now that we're plugged in, and remember our clutch is off, just the same as before. And I'm back probing. And now we have 2.6 on the meter. So that's the two and a half volts that I was saying it should be when it's approximately 70 to 90 psi with the clutch off. Now I'm assuming this is going to work when we turn it on. Don't know for sure, but we'll watch the clutch and I'll get in the car and turn the car on and see if they see this. clutch is spinning. Uh, I'll get a thermometer in the vent to see what it's cooling to. Uh, obviously the car might need some Freon added to it. It may not be full of Freon, but this is the main problem that's causing it not to work. Now, if you'll bring the camera over here. Now that we're running, pressure has went up. Okay, we have the AC machine on it. These are pretty good working pressures for the temperature of today. Uh, 30 PSI on the low side and 175 on the high side. So if we understand, before I was estimating 70 to 90 PSI and I had 2.5 volts here, now we have 175 PSI and we have 4.2 volts. So let's write that down. So before we had approximately 70 to 90 PSI and we had 2.6 volts and that's with the working sensor. And then now that it's running, we have 175 PSI, and we have we have 4.4 volts. Now on our non-working system, this is working. On our non-working system with a defective pressure sensor, we had approximately 70 to 90 PSI, and we had eight. 8 volts plus. So if you understand that 4.4 volts means it's about 175 psi, what would 8, .8, 8 point what would 8 volts plus mean in psi? But it'd be, it'd be probably double that, so 350. So that would be too much pressure, and or at least the maximum pressure, and uh, that makes the system inoperative. So if you use this chart, you can diagnose your pressure sensor based on voltage. I'm not saying that every defective sensor will fail this way. It could fail in other ways. But what you should see is with the car off, estimating 70 to 90 PSI, you should see about 2.6 volts. With the car on it at about 175 PSI, you should see 4.4 volts. Now, that, ain't, that don't mean you're going to have 175 with the car on. Maybe on a hotter day, it would be higher than that. If you've got a high uh, overcharged Freon system, that could be higher than that. If you have an undercharged Freon system, it could be lower than that. So there's a lot of variables that's going to affect this, but that's how you would diagnose your high pressure sensor. And I also want to point out to avoid any confusion that this is not a high pressure switch. Okay, earlier cars had a high pressure switch. It was also had a low pressure switch integrated into it, but um, this is a sensor. Okay, as I said, this is really good pressure for the temperature of today, and I want to show you that we have really good temperature coming out of this thing. 
it's at 53 degrees sitting here in the bay. Obviously on the highway that will be even better. And I think that's all you need if you're a do-it-yourselfer. Now I want to point out that measuring voltage on that sig signal return wire is not the right way to do it. I think it can be improvised the way I've done it and it can give you some semi-accurate results. And if you've learned anything from this video, be sure and click the like button. If you want to donate to the continued production of these videos, visit my website at www.kansascitytdi.com. But I've got some bonus tech for you. This is the way the sensor actually works. When that, there's a, some electronics inside that sensor, and it outputs, I have my oscilloscope hooked here, and it outputs on that signal wire a pulse width. And so here's our pulse width. I have this, this signal triggered on this rising slope and the, it, it gives the sensor puts this you see here this is approximately zero volts and then it puts this much voltage on it which is approximately 12 volts for this amount of time and then it drops back down and then it goes back up again for this amount of time that's pulse width or duty cycle and you, I've set the measurements to where it measures the duty cycle and down here it's at about 34% on time and um, so this is what you would expect to see on an oscilloscope 34% duty cycle on time if you're at 175 PSI now you would also need to know what your duty cycle should be when the car is off and the, or the clutch is off I'm just going to go ahead and turn the car off and we'll look at what the duty cycle changes to then. We should be able to see that duty cycle get smaller and smaller as pressure drops on that high side. So pressure's already at 150 and oops I turned the car off. I need to leave the car on for that sensor to still be active. But the clutch is now off because the cars running and we should be seeing our 34% duty cycle dropping as the pressure goes down and it is dropping doesn't look like much on the screen here but the reason we see a voltage on this and we because the meter can't see it this fast it ain't going to show you 11 volts and zero volts this is such a fast frequency that the meters just going to like average it out and but I think that's good enough information um, once this pressure gets down to uh, 90 to 70 so we're nearing a hundred now so our duty cycle at 90 to 70 would be 25 be a little bit less than 25. Let's let it keep dropping and I'll record some more. So it's dropped about as much as it's going to drop. It's a really hot day today. 100 PSI and we are at a duty cycle of 23 percent and you can absolutely see that that is narrower and that is wider than before and so that's how the sensor actually works. Using a voltmeter is just giving you an average of the voltage because this is on it's at 11 volts more often or lo for longer periods of time and so it shows you a higher voltage. It's not really the right way to do it. This is the right way to do it. But I want to show what the bad sensor shows. So I'm going to reinstall that and show the duty cycle of the bad sensor. Are you doing? harder to unscrew this sensor with a AC machine coupled here. Back in with the old bag sensor. Plug it in, plug it in. Now, I don't know if you could hear that, but literally since, literally since I just had the fans on with the old sensor, 
I can tell the difference in the tone. This, these fans are now on at high speed. This is showing high pressure to the fan control module, so it's turning these on at high speed. So that may be a key point to help you in your diagnosis. If you have the fans on at high speed, as soon as you plug it in with the AC on, the fan control module thinks you're at high pressure, so that can be an indicator for you. Get this back probe. Okay, so now on our oscilloscope, we have an on time with our duty cycle of 90%. You can see the difference. It's very, very wide on the first uh, pattern and then very, very narrow here, whereas before it was very, very narrow and then very, very wide. So that's the way you're supposed to check the sensor. If you've uh, li enjoyed this video or you learned something from it, be sure to click the like button. Oh, and here's our new sensor. There's the part number if you need it. And if you want to uh, donate to the continued production of these videos, visit my website at www.kansascitytdi.com. If you want to watch another one of my videos, there'll be one right there, one right there. And don't forget to subscribe right there. Thanks for watching.